Now I'm going to ask you to please join me in welcoming my dearly esteemed colleagues, Bioneer's Indigeneity Programs Director and Manager, Kara Romero, who comes from the Chemehuevi peoples of the Mojave Desert in Southern California, and Alexis Bunton, who comes from the Aleut and Yupik peoples from Naknak, Alaska. Please welcome Kara and Alexis. Kara and I were just talking about how we were born to bridge cultures. She grew up on the Chemoevi Reservation. Her grandmother was instrumental in bringing together her tribe. Her dad and her auntie still live on the reservation. She describes her mom as a Southern California beach bunny, though. When she grew up, in between becoming an award-winning photographer, tribal chairperson, and director of the Chemoevi Cultural Center, Kara was distinctly aware of the viewpoints of her native and non-native sides of the family. Meanwhile, Alexis grew up on the Northwest Coast, spending her school years in Seattle and summers with family in Alaska, also born of both European settlers and natives from a remote fishing village you can only get to by boat or plane, Alexis was keenly aware of the differences between the native and non-native ways of understanding, which eventually led her to work in the native heritage sector, sharing native issues with a broader public audience as an anthropologist. So a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about how passionate we are to share native solutions to the biggest threats this planet faces, and how blessed we feel to do it through the platform of Bioneers, an organization that has recognized the wisdom of indigenous people since its inception 28 years ago. Kara and I realized that we're in a unique position to bridge cultures because of our backgrounds. We feel like we were born to do this cross-cultural bridging. We feel, a <laughs> we feel a really strong responsibility to our tribes and to the broader world to protect nature for future ancestors, those yet to be born. This is especially poignant because we are both moms to our kids who, like us, come from intercultural backgrounds and who will be, who will be responsible for our ancestral homelands wherever they end up as adults. My tribe was instrumental in fighting off Pebble Mine, the largest open pit mine ever proposed in North America. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> no more. <laughs> Thank you. But, however, I know deep in my heart that this victory may be short-lived, and given current environmental law, might only just be pushing off future extraction. So I got what was happening at Standing Rock. It was the same conflict that my tribe is constantly battling in Alaska. And deep down, I truly fear that the fight will never end, we're, that we're just pushing off the inevitable destruction of our most precious ecosystems. And I felt the same. We felt the same. I cried with the water protectors when as soon as the presidential office changed hands, orders were signed to begin digging the pipeline under the precious waters of the Cannonball River. And now the oil is flowing through the Dakota Access Pipeline. It's already leaked several times. Just like the fight at Standing Rock, my tribe spent a year camped out protecting Ward Valley from becoming a nuclear waste dump that would have destroyed a water table that influences the Colorado River. And now it's about water diversion and battling aquifer robbers and trying to protect the desert tortoise. Well, I, I actually thought maybe you would have forgotten about Pebble Mine right now by now, but you didn't. Well, that's cool. Uh, but you probably don't know about the gravel pit that's proposed at Sargent Ranch, not very far away, near Gilroy, at a place uh, that the Amamutsin people called Uristoc. It was the most sacred place to the tribes from the central coast of California, whose ancestors are still here. And you know when you were in the Indigenous Forum yesterday. The California Central Coast has been my home for seven years now, and even if it wasn't, I would be devastated to learn about these developments. We can no longer say, oh, I'm from somewhere else, though. We are responsible for the places that we now live in.
The truth is, at any given time, there are hundreds of proposed developments to desecrate, rape, and eventually abandon sacred native lands and the ecosystems around them that we all depend on. Until we change the very underlying system under which our country was founded, a system that treats native lands as property and ecosystems as expendable, the never-ending destruction of the earth will continue. That's why we were so excited to learn about the Rights of Nature movement. If you've heard about how the country of Ecuador wrote Rights of Nature into its constitution, you know about Rights of Nature. If you've heard about how India granted personhood to the Ganges River last year, you've heard about the Rights of Nature. <laughs> Instead of current environmental law, which works within a system founded to endlessly rape the planet, Rights of Nature turns the legal system on its head. Rights of Nature is a movement of all peoples led by rural and urban communities, towns, tribes, and citizen action groups to take back the law and write new policy that recognizes the fundamental rights of nature to exist. And if it's destroyed, to clean it up and repair it. Unlike existing environmental law, rights, rights of nature does not accept that nature is property. Mother Earth has rights, period. This is what our ancestors have always said. I grew up in the wild of the Mojave Desert, always being reminded that this pristine area belonged to the animals and that we must learn to exist without disturbing balance to the ecosystem. We talk to the plants and even sing to all the beautiful trees and the smallest ants in our songs that come from time immemorial. It's the idea that we are actually in service to all the life givers and providers of our ecosystem, that we only take if we've asked that we do not cause pain and harm to Mother Earth. I mean, even with the rattlesnakes back home, my grandma would say, just remember, we've moved into their territory. And thousands of miles away, all the way up in Alaska, I also grew up with the belief that we are interconnected, that human beings are no higher than plants and animals. Mother Earth isn't something that you own and can take from at will. All parts of the Earth, even the rocks of the, and the dirt, are a part of us, and that we have a relation to all of it as kin. We have a responsibility to it. If we ignore that responsibility, to the plants, to the trees, to animals, to the littlest bug, to water, to all of it, then we're doomed. We're out of touch. And that's what the modern consumerist capitalist society has done, and it's perhaps most obvious in America today at this very moment. But what also makes me feel so passionate about rights of nature is that it is not just tribal wisdom injected into the current legal system to turn it on its head, Although I do love twisting up the colonial system imposed to destroy our tribes to make it work for our tribes, and as an act of asserting sovereignty, which it is. Rights of nature is something that everybody gets. I truly believe that all of us here at Bioneers easily share the view that nature has the fundamental right to exist. <laughs> and that we owe nature, not the other way around that we are part of nature, not that it is something separate from us. The Bioneers Indigeneity Program is moving into education mode on rights of nature, partnering with tribes and native organizations across the US and around the world to share ways we can self-determine as native peoples of all backgrounds to protect nature. We're already working with the Havasupai and the 13 tribes on the Colorado Plateau through our partners at Colorado Plateau Intertribal Conversations, and most recently, several California leaders right here. This spring, I'm taking it to Chimuevi. Rights of nature is just the kind of big, revolutionary, paradigm-shifting idea that we love to highlight here at Bioneers. Yeah. Grassroots, rights of nature policymaking holds the power to take back America and the world, to be honest, from corporate greed that can only feed a fossil fuel guzzling, kamikaze style Anthropocene hell bent on destroying itself. That is right. <laughs> 
Rights of nature is rooted in indigenous worldviews, but our non-native friends, family, and colleagues completely get it. I'm hopeful that the rights of nature movement will bring us together from all walks of life and all backgrounds because we all love Mother Earth. Over the next year, you're invited to follow Bioneers Indigeneity on social media, read the Bioneers newsletters, stay involved with Bioneers and our partners Thomas Lindsay and Mari Margill with the Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund to learn more about rights of nature and learn how you can get involved. Thank you.